I decided to get this Aero Garden in-home garden system because I wanted to try it out, but from two different perspectives. One for the average person that's on the go, has no time, or does not really want to mess with garden or soil. And the second one is from a gardener perspective. So let's go check it out. What's going on my plant fam? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And look what I got. I just got this in-home garden system because frankly I just wanted to try something different. And I know that this one is primarily for your kitchen counter. And this, the beauty of this is what really attracted me to it is the fact that this is no soil. I'm always messing with dirt inside of my house. I have dirt everywhere. And it's nice to have a little area that does not require any soil. The beautiful thing about it from the perspective of the average person is that, you know what, it seems relatively simple to set up. If this works out well, then I know that this is gonna be really good in my kitchen area where I'm always cooking so I can have easy, quick access to herbs or any small plant or micro plant that you wanna grow here. There's a button in the back that lowers and raises the lights. The only bummer about this is that it only goes up to like 12 inches, but at the same time, this is only for your kitchen counter and this is for something really quick, so. I can understand the height, but I'm sure us gardeners know that we can modify this and add on to it, but that's for later. This does come apart, but I'm assuming this is just for easy cleaning. And there we go. Now we have the reservoir. It's not bad. This is where we're gonna put our water. All right, we're gonna fill this up. And, oh man, still not enough water. All right, let's get a little more organized here. All right, after you fill that up, we're gonna put this back. Let's see what's up with this box. This comes with six of them. Not bad though, right? Now the top of this has holes. Now that is where you're gonna sit your dome inside of here, and that is where it's gonna go. The bottom of this seed thing, I don't know what it's called, a thing. Now the bottom of this is going to be sitting inside of that water, and that is how it's gonna be growing. These already have names of seeds. Now this one's dill, curly parsley, Thai basil, thyme, Genovese basil. There's a bunch of basil in here, mints. You don't have to use them all at the same time. You can space them out if you want to, but you do have six available whole options. So if you want to start them all in one time, I guess you could. It means nothing really hurting you. However, if you do know the size of how big these plants grow, then you can better understand how many of these pods you want. You know, for example, basil has a tendency of getting really big pretty fast. So you could just do two pods, one on each side. That'll give you enough space to grow more, or you can decide to use all six. Doesn't really matter. Now this comes with liquid plant food. Now when it comes with hydroponics and fertilizer versus fertilizing from the soil, the measurements is quite different. This is going to be really, really concentrated. So you have to pay attention to the directions. You can't just dump, you know, however you feel like it. You can really hurt your plants, you can burn them, and they can die if you over fertilize. Yeah, that's a thing, so you don't wanna do that. So pay attention to the directions on the back of the bottle. All right, that was pretty simple. That was easy. All right, we did that. Now we can put our cap on. Now you can put your seed pods inside of this, you know, the little holes. Now this also comes, oops. Now you're going to put these caps right on top of them because that's going to retain the moisture, the humidity, and the heat. So we want that, at least just in the beginning when you first start growing your seeds. And then you're going to drop this down right here as far as it goes. And now we start. Okay, let's move some plants. All right, this is what it looks like when you light it up, when you first light it up at least. I don't know why this is flashing. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you see this flashing? Oh, look at that, it's running water. Let's look at them lights. Not bad, not bad. Quite bright, I'm feeling it. The average germination for your seedlings is approximately like seven to 14 days. It all depends on the variety and what you're growing. But generally, that's just the average time, seven to 14. As your seedling gets bigger, you're no longer going to need this, you know, this dome cap. But don't throw it away. You can use it for, you know, for another time. Either way, I'm going to leave this going for at least 12 to 14 hours per day until I see some germination and I see some seedlings. I'm going for a long time in the beginning because in the germination and seedling stage, they require a lot of light. As the seedling starts to grow, you're going to be raising the light. 
You don't want the plant leaves touching the light. It can possibly burn or crisp up those leaves, but you do want it at least two to three inches above the plant, you know, for optimal conditions. But look at that, not bad. I guess we'll check back in a few days or whenever it germinates. it has been exactly one month to the day where I set up this arrow garden and what are my thoughts on this yo this thing is legit I love this thing this arrow garden can come in handy for a few reasons one if you're super busy and you can't really find the time to kind of mess with a bunch of plants number two was that there is no soil involved and if you have a setup like this requiring no soil that is a win I'll tell you right now Number three was these herbs grow pretty fast. Look how big they grew in just one month. I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of this arrow garden from a gardener's perspective, but I'm gonna start with the pros. Number one is it is so compact and it fits on my kitchen counter, which is really good. It does not take up a lot of space at all. Second, it comes with the grow light already there, so you don't have to buy an extra grow light. It's all set up right there. Number three is hydroponics. There is no soil required. And us gardeners and houseplant people know that having soil around gets really dirty. And nobody wants to have that, especially on your kitchen counter. So this worked out really good. Number four, number five, I lost track already, but there was minimal to no pests. I'm thinking that the only reason why I saw fungus gnats here is because I have a fungus gnat problem inside of my house. It's not really a problem. I just kind of learned to live with fungus gnats after a while, being that I have so many plants. Another reason why I like it is that you can actually grow multiple herbs at the same time. You don't have to grow just one. You don't have to grow just six. You can grow all different kinds at all different stages. Another thing that I enjoyed about it, how easy it was to have access to herbs when you're cooking, especially in your kitchen. You don't want to go out to the store. You don't want to be messing with dirt outside or anything. It's right on your kitchen counter. When these herbs needed fertilizer and it was time to give them some nutrients, the Arrow Garden actually let you know when it was time to give it nutrients. The button would actually blink. Now the same thing happened with the water. When the water level got too low for this, because remember there's a bunch of roots inside of this that is soaking up all that water, it would actually let you know when it's time to fill up the water. I gotta say, this is like my personal assistant. It lets me know when it needs water. It lets me know when it needs nutrients. It has everything there and it is just, I gotta say, Jackie approved, man. Now when it comes to the cons of this arrow garden, there wasn't that many. And I think there only was some is because I was being super picky because I am a gardener, of course. So let's go over them. One of the cons is that the light only goes a foot up. So if you wanted to grow something a lot larger, you couldn't because you are restricted by the, you know, the height of the arrow garden. A counter to that is, you know what, you just have to pick the right herbs or pick the right plants to fit within that small space. So it's not that much of a con, but of course, if you want to plant big, then maybe this is not for you. One of the cons is, is that you really have to research what kind of herbs or plant that you're going to be growing inside of this. Another negative would be the different rate of the plants growing within the light. That can be corrected, however, if you do your due diligence and you research the plant that you're trying to grow in here. Not every seed germinates at the same rate. As you can see here, dill grew amazingly, but also the thyme back here and the parsley did not grow that fast. Now the last con or negative that I found with this arrow garden is not really a big one, but uh, it kind of puts a damper on it. Every time you want to plant a new one, you have to get a new pod. And in order to get a new pod is you gotta buy it. That's how they make their money, reoccurring purchases by buying new seeds. But also if you think about it, try getting that plant and its roots out of that seed container. It may be on the tricky side, it may be on the messy side, and maybe you don't wanna go through all that hassle and work. So you may have to just buy a lot of these replacement seed pods. It wasn't that expensive, but it wasn't exactly cheap either. Is it worth it though? I think so. They even offer different varieties. I actually have here a mini tomato that I'm gonna try next. And also this is the plain one that you can put whatever seed you want inside of it. So 
It's a con, neg it's a negative, but silver linings to a lot of these things. I gotta say, this is Jackie approved, and I gotta say also that it is ADHD approved. Now keep in mind, again, I'm always talking about mindfulness. Now you can't just set it and forget it completely and expect this to you know, be working out perfectly. It may not require a lot of mindfulness, it may not require a lot of paying attention, but you still have to pay attention and you still have to be mindful. I think this is something that is helpful in getting you into the track or habit of paying attention to your plants. Let's say you're a beginner plant person and you don't know when is a good time to water or when is it a good time that you need fertilizer. This will actually give you a good heads up or a good help into figuring out when those times look like. So, I mean, you can use this as a reference point. I was not sponsored by this. Hint, hint, Arrow Garden, you wanna sponsor me? So where I did buy it from is I actually, I'm gonna drop the link down below. I actually got it from Amazon. If you click on that link, of course, I'm probably gonna get a little kickback from it, but at least you can see. You don't have to, but you can also see the options available in Amazon. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. I drop some DIY projects, funny memes, and a little bit on the personal side. As usual, I want you to grow your happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. And until the next episode, you guys, peace and love.